how to consolidate. Well, that's advanced accounting technique. And in this video, I'm going to show you the basic steps to follow in an easy example to put you on the starting point. I'm Sylvia of cpdbox.com and you're very welcome to check my website and courses if you want to make significant and fast progress in your IFRS knowledge. So here's the example. Mami Corporation purchased 80% shares of Baby Limited a few years ago. So here it's clear that Mami is a parent and Baby is a subsidiary. And no, the names are not coincidence. I just wanted you to remember well who's who. Below, there are statements of financial positions of both Mummy and Baby at 31st December 20X4. Prepare consolidated statement of financial position of Mummy Group at 31st December 20X4. Note, measure non-controlling interest at its proportionate share of Baby's net assets. All retain earnings of Baby are post-acquisition. So this is one very, very basic example, and we will solve it in a very straight and clear manner. We'll do it step by step, exactly as described in the standard IFRS 10 consolidated financial statements. I always recommend that you draw a nice scheme of a group, some sort of a group chart, even if it seems simple in this case, but that graphic illustration will help you understand what's going on. So we have a baby here, mommy here, and this arrow indicates that mommy owns 80% of baby. And the remaining 20% are owned by other shareholders, and we call them non-controlling interest. The first step is to combine like items of assets, liabilities, equity, income, expenses, and cash flows of the parent with those of its subsidiaries. So let's do it. Here it's obvious that both balance sheets or the statements of financial position have the same format, the same line items. So it's quite easy to add everything up line by line. In reality, a parent can use format of the statement of financial position different from its subsidiaries one. And that's exactly the reason why subsidiaries prepare all those consolidation packages at the reporting dates to bring that into the same format, right? Step number two, we need to offset or eliminate carrying amount of parents investment in subsidiary with parents portion of equity of each subsidiary and recognize any non-controlling interest and goodwill. So we'll do this eliminating entry in the separate column. Just a side note here, for the sake of simplicity and illustration and make all debit entries with plus and all credit entries with minus. And you can know the same with assets, they are plus and liabilities and equity are minus. So we credit mommy's investment in full. We insert minus 70,000 here. Then we debit baby's share capital in full. So plus 80,000 here. And yes, consolidated statement of financial position will show only the share capital of mommy and zero for baby, even if it's not owned fully by mommy. Okay. Now we have other components of baby's equity that do not belong to the mummy group and we need to eliminate them. Here we only have retained earnings of 45,000 currency units and they are all post acquisition. The question said so. Please always differentiate between pre acquisition and post acquisition retained earnings of a subsidiary because they are treated differently. But here we focus on basics only. So we need to eliminate a part of baby's post acquisition retained earnings too. What part? Well, 20% because that belongs to the other shareholders. Mummy owns just 80%. So we debit retained earnings with plus 20% times 45,000, which is 9,000. And finally, we need to recognize non-controlling interest. And those are exactly the other shareholders of baby who own remaining 20%. Let's calculate it here below in a separate note or working. 
we applied method one. So we need to calculate non-controlling interest as a proportionate share in base business net assets. Method two would be at fair value. So baby's net assets are 125,000, which is baby's equity. Non-controlling interest share is 20%. So the amount of non-controlling interest is 25,000. And we can bring this amount to our entry as minus 25,000. This is the equity component and that's why it's minus. But when you look here below to our checksum, the entry is still not balanced and it means that there might be some goodwill. So let's check it here. It's calculated as fair value of consideration transferred. Here the mummy's balance sheet. It's a cost of investment in baby, 70,000. Add non-controlling interest at acquisition date which is 20% of baby's equity at the acquisition date. So it's not the same non-controlling interest as above because above there's the current non-controlling interest at the reporting date. And here we always calculate goodwill at the acquisition date. Now, as all the reserves or baby's retain earnings are post acquisition, then at the acquisition, baby had just share capital of 80,000 and 20% of that is 16,000. And that's non-controlling interest at acquisition date measured by the proportionate share. Finally, we deduct baby's net assets at acquisition again, just share capital of 80,000. And when we add this up, the goodwill is 6,000 and we need to recognize it as intangible asset, goodwill acquired in a business combination and also then you would have to perform annual impairment test, but we're not going to do that in this example. So see, our entry is balanced. Check some below, table shows zero, that's okay. Step number three is to offset or eliminate in full intragroup assets, liabilities, equity, income, expenses, and cash flows related to transactions between companies in the group because from the point of view of external users to the group there is no transaction it's one entity only so when you look here mommy had a receivable to baby amounting to eight thousand and baby has a payable to mommy amounting to eight thousand too so how do we eliminate it we simply debit payables with eight thousand and credit receivables with 8,000. And so the last column is Mummy Group's consolidated statement of financial position. And I simply add the combined numbers with the adjustments exactly as before. And now look. Mummy's financial investment in baby is zero and so is baby's share capital. Great, that's okay in the consolidated financial statements. Group retained earnings show some strange figure now because this is not simple addition of mummy plus baby. Let's take a look to working number two to check that. So group's retained earnings should be equal to mummy's retained earnings of 62,000. Mummy's share on baby's post-acquisition retained earnings, which are full retained earnings, and that's 80% of 45,000, which is 36,000. Add it up and you get 98,000 exactly is in our consolidated balance sheet. Everything else in that balance sheet makes sense. Non-controlling interest is 25,000 as we calculated below. Goodwill is 6,000, that's okay. And other balances seem fine too. Now, this was a demonstration of a very simple case study or example and very logical way of doing the things. If you are sitting the exam, you would usually do it in a different style. You would just calculate everything in workings as I did here below, and you would simply enter these numbers to consolidate the statement of financial position without all those columns. So this is okay, and it's up to you. But let me warn you, this is wonderful for the exam. It's not so wonderful in the real life. 
Why? Because there are many more transactions. And if you want to calculate consolidated retained earnings, just as an example, then you can easily forget something. And as a result, the numbers would not balance. So I prefer doing it this sort of accounting way. Like this video if it helped, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell or visit my website for the free newsletter. Thank you for watching and for supporting my work.